we're going to use the idea of lists <coughs> to tell our turtle a series of commands. You know, when we did that, uh, that bear and that tortoise drawing, we had to issue a whole bunch of commands in a row. It would be neat if we could do something like this. Commands is equal to, and that's how you start a list with square brackets, and say we wanted to do something like this. Forward 100, right 90, forward 200, that kind of thing. That's going to draw kind of an L shape or something like that. A seven. Who knows what it's going to draw. We'll find out. So when we look at this, there's a couple of problems involved. One is we have to be able to step through this code, excuse me, through this list and get out the pieces of data. I think we have shown that there are two ways you could step through a list. One, I'm going to colloquially call it a for each loop. The word each doesn't occur in it, but here's a for each loop. For each, nope, 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 nope. For S, in commands. I'm using the S just because these are strings, but we could really fill that in with any word we want to do. We could do for Hulk and commands, you know, for Fred, whatever. Print command, um, print S. There we go. So this is a for loop where S is a temporary variable that gets filled in with each element in the list in turn. So that's a list with three elements. That for loop is going to print out F100, R90, and F200. Then it's going to stop. So that's a for each. I guess we could change its name to for in. That sounds like foreign though, you know, because it uses the word in here, you know. The other is when you use, well, no, that's not good. I'm going to take that back for each. Then the other kind is when you use a number to print out the elements in the list because each element has an index number. What is the index number of that item? Zero, and that one's one, and that one's two. So we need a counter that will go from zero to two. We could hard code two in there but it's not going to really be a good idea to do that because then when we add more items to the list, it would still only print out 0, 1, and 2. So instead, we want to print out up to the length of the list. For, and I like to use some a S in strings, but if we're using a counter, I like X or I for my counter, you know. You could uh, use whatever letter you want to, whatever makes sense. I like I, you know, for index. For I in range, Here's our first effort at it. Three. What that will do is I will equal zero, one, and two. Why? Because the range statement stops before it hits that. Kind of weird. But this will cause it to print zero, one, and two. The range statement can support more than one parameter. You can give it a starting point. I want you to start at zero and then quit up to but not including three, so that would print out zero, one, and two. Don't make this change. But if you wanted to go from 10 to 20, you'd do it like that. Starting at 10 and keep counting until you're past 20. You know, that would count from 10 to 20. If you want to count from one to 100, you would do that. Now don't make all these changes, these are examples. Let's go back and just say, we're gonna start at zero and that's optional. You don't have to specify a zero. If you leave the zero off, it assumes zero. And we're going to go up to the length of the commands. Because the len function returns the length of the list, which is three. 
So this is going to count 0, 1, and 2. Now we don't have an S variable anymore. We still have our commands list, so we're going to print out commands, but we want to print out element at index i. So that's two ways of accessing a list, elements in a list. I like the top one. It's much simpler to type, right? This one is important because if you wanted to change the elements in the list, you could do so. S is just a copy of the elements in the list. When it starts running, S is equal to F100, but if you change it, it doesn't actually change the list. However, if we did change it, don't type this. If we said command I is equal to duh, you know, whatever, then um, that would actually replace every element in the list with duh, you know. So uh, we don't really want to do that. But there are times when you actually want to modify the data in a list, in which case you don't have any choice really but to do that kind of thing. So I'm going to call this, say, for in range. Because we're going up to, you know, a list. So this counts a series of numbers. Just remember that if you use a range statement, you're getting a counter. If you use this syntax, you're actually getting the items in the list. Still trying to come up with better names for these. Anyways. So, we want to go through a list, and then, really, we don't want to print it out. I'm going to wind up commenting just about all this stuff out. But what we want to be able to do is do something like for every S in commands, Simon says, go do that. That's the way we want it to work. Now, we don't have a function called Simon. We don't have a turtle, you know. This isn't going to do anything. It would break if we tried to run it at this point. But that's the way we want it to work, because then we could make commands as long as we want it. We could list 200 commands in a row. And then just with one statement, it would loop through the list, issuing each command. All right, so let's make a turtle called Simon. To make a turtle, we have to have our import import turtle and then Simon is equal to turtle dot capital T turtle and don't forget your parentheses that's enough now let's make a function called Simon says what's the keyword that defines a function DEF. yeah DEF so DEF Simon says, that's actually not the way it works, right? Simon is supposed to be the person telling you, not who you're telling, but whatever. And we're going to give Simon a command. I'm just going to call it S because it's a string. Now we have another problem. Our command looks something like this, and don't type this stuff. If our command looks something like this, but we want to go forward, we want Simon, like I said, don't type this. We want Simon to go forward 100, comma, excuse me, what am I doing? There we go. We want to know, based on the fact that it starts with an F, that we want to go forward, and we want to know that there's a number, that there's an integer 100 there that we need to pass. So this string here needs to be broken up into a couple of pieces of data. How would we index the first element of the string? How do we figure out what that is? What element index is that? And you got it, but I want to hear other people say it too. Come on. I thought I heard a rumbling. Tell me, guys. Zero. Yeah, it's zero, just like that one. So, delete that. We're going to say that our command equals the first element of that string. So it'll be an F, or it'll be an R, 
you know, that kind of thing. And then this is our value. We need a way of extracting that. But there can be a problem. What if um, there are some commands that we decide don't even take a, val a value? I almost said take a volume. Um, like, you know, pin up or pin down. They don't require a parameter. We won't need a number every time. So if we just blithely assume that there's a number following that letter, it could be a problem. But we want to take everything after the first letter. So starting at index 1 and going all the way to the end of the string, however long it was, that's this index we want for the value. Value is equal to s starting at position 1 and going all the way to the end of the string. So we're using slicing. And remember that if you leave off the second number in a slice, it goes all the way to the end of the string. But that's not an integer. There's more than one way we could try to solve the fact that it's not an integer. The uh, first problem is there may not be any data there at all. If, it, if we were just passed in, let's say that our string looked like this. Don't type this. If our string looked like this, whatever the x command is, then at this point, value is going to equal an empty string. Because command winds up being x, and then the rest of the string from position 1 to the end, well, there is nothing at position 1. So value is going to be an empty string. So why don't we do a check? If value, no, let, let's check the length of the value. If the length of the value is equal to zero, let's just pretend value is equal to zero. We're going to turn it into an integer. Don't use two equals there, unlike me. There we go, like that. I'm not digging that Simon forward there. I'm going to delete that. I also forgot to indent everything. Y'all are my debuggers. You're supposed to catch me or throw shoes at me or something if I do that. Indent all this stuff. All right. That takes care of the fact that they may have passed in something without, you know, with just a letter. But what if they pass in something like this? What if we want to be able to specify a color. Don't type this. What if, you know, we wanted to be able to change the color to red? I, I don't really like it saying just C red, but anyways. In that case, command would equal C, and the value is going to equal red. So we can't just blindly call I and T on it and hope that, you know. So I think we have learned is digit, right? Somebody nod, yes or no? Okay. If we hadn't used is, dig is digit, then uh, we would take this another way. So, elif value dot is composed of digits, is digit, then let's turn it into an int. I suppose we could even, what am I doing there? We, I suppose we could even turn it into a float if we were worried that somebody want, wanted to go 100.1 pixels. But let's just leave that alone. And then lastly, if neither one of those things are true, then we're good. Value is a string, something like the color, you know, and we don't need to change it. By the time we're done here, we have a choice, or three choices. At this point, value either equals zero, or the integer value of the number passed in, I don't care if you type this comment in, or a string representing a color or whatever. So now we're good. We have a command, something like F, you know, or R, you know, and we're going to also implement, I don't know why, L, you know, things like that. 
So we just need a whole bunch of if statements now. If command is equal to F, then Simon the turtle is going to go forward. He's going to go forward that many pixels. So this would cause Simon to go forward 100 pixels. We may as well run it here just to make sure that, I mean, we haven't implemented this yet, the turning right. But we're going to make sure, he, make sure that at least that he goes forward. So I'm going to call this program Simon. Simon.py. And he did go forward. There aren't any syntax errors. That's encouraging. Run yours. See if you have any syntax errors. I forgot to resume the chart, the uh, recording. So here we go. We've added this one. L if command is equal to R Simon dot right. You can guess what we're going to do next. We're going to make him check to go left. I don't have any lefts in my data so far, but we can add some to test. All right. So now we made our primitive looking seven. Add on L. If command equals L, Simon dot left. And add on a B for back. So tack on an L to go left. Tack on a B to go backwards. So you're just going to need two more LFs and two more Simon commands. I forgot to stick my name and date up at the top of the program. You may as well go and do that. Simon says turtle program, my name, the date which happens to be April 5. Remember that if you're going to test L and B, you actually have to add those to your commands. So go add a few more commands to your list. You know, turn left 90 degrees and then go backwards. You can simulate going backwards by doing forward negative 100, but that would cause is digit to fail. <coughs> is digit is kind of dumb. It doesn't know that the minus sign is, can be part of a number. So that's why we went ahead and implemented a back. Just like you could implement a left by turning right a negative number of degrees. Kind of a weird idea, but if we were trying for an absolute minimalist implementation with as few commands as possible, we could do that. But that would break this check, those minus signs. So we're going to leave those alone. All right. I'm a cheat. I'm going to copy those, <clears throat> that L if, so I can paste it two times and then just change that to an L. If command is equal to L, turn left, Simon.left. And if command is equal to back, then simon.back. We should be making a list of the commands. I kind of started one here, but we'll go back and make a list of the command. And I need to do a, a real fast test. Excuse me. Don't add what I'm about to see. I want to remember if it's just heading or set heading. So simon dot heading, we want to go 90 degrees. I want to see if this works or if it's actually set it's heading. heading. It's set? No, it's just regular heading. Okay. Yeah. Takes one positional argument, but two are given. Uh-uh.
it. You know what it is. I'm messing it up. What did I do wrong there? Set heading Python 3. Yeah, it is set heading. Okay. All right, that answers that. Let's add one more command for H so that we can set heading. In Python world, zero is not due north, it's due east. So north is 90, west is 180, and south is 270. But anyways, we may as well support that even though we haven't been doing it so far. LF command is equal to H, colon, Simon dot set heading that value. And at the very end of this, we need to tell them we didn't recognize the command. So we're going to tack a final else on that says print, and we're going to type in the command. We're going to print out the command, and we're going to print out the words not implemented. That way, if we pass in x20 or something like that, it doesn't know what x means. So we print out an error message. All right, let's tack on some commands to exercise the rest of these. I'm going to go left 45 degrees, forward 200, back 200. Then I'm going to set my heading somewhere, 270, so that we'll go straight down. And then forward 300. Might go off the screen, who knows. There, we, so we have a whole list of commands, but I think that we've implemented all of these. F, right, F, left, F, back, heading, one more F. Looks like it worked. After he was going south, he went uh, forward 200, he backed up 100, and then he turned and he went that heading. Nifty. What other commands might we want to implement? I can only think of a few more. Color is a good one. How about any that take a numeric value? Speed is what I'm thinking of there. Once this um, drawing becomes complex with thousands of items, which it's not going to, obviously. L if command is equal to speed. Simon dot speed value. Put that before your final else. And let's go ahead and do color. L if command is equal. Did I say C? That's an S. So if command is equal to S, set is speed. If his command is equal to C, Simon dot color value. Now actually the color command takes either one or two parameters. If you do two parameters, it sets the first one's the color of the line, the second one's the fill. For now, let's ignore that and just set to both of them equal to the same thing. We could try to improve that at a certain point, but we'll just stick with that. All right, this list is getting kind of long. And what I would really like for it to be able to do is not to have to even write a for loop there. I would rather that for loop be in its own function so that all we have to do is tell Simon to go and process that entire list. So we're going to write one more function that looks like these, this code right here. Define Simon do list. That looks weird. Maybe I'll add some underscores. Simon do list commands colon and now we need that for loop for s in commands 
Simon says do that command. That way down here I can say commands is equal to blah 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 and then I can just do Simon underscore do underscore list commands like that. I don't want to have to write a for loop each time I make a new list of things to do. Make a new commands list. Let's set the color of the turtle different. Turtle is going to be green. The colors actually, I believe, have to be lowercase. So although C is uppercase. I did red uppercase and it worked. Okay. Did you do red uppercase? Yeah. You said? Okay. I'm wrong. Somebody seemed to type in brick house as with a capital B and it didn't seem to recognize it. That's the only reason I'm worried about it. All righty. No, I don't know. Let's do a square, which is going to require four left turns or right turns. So left 90, comma, forward 90. I'm just going to use 90 all the way out because it's easy to remember. Another left turn, another forward 90. I've done two turns two sides, but I need to do two more. Left 90, forward 90, and then our last left 90. Have I done too many now? One forward, two forwards, three forwards. Okay, I'm on my last line. Forward 90. Do you have to put all the spaces there? No, but I think it makes it easier to read. And then Simon underscore do underscore list commands. No S. Thank you. You know what? I'm going to put the S here. I want it to be consistent. So commands rather than CMD without a space. My mistake there. This is getting long enough. Where'd my square go? What did I do wrong? I'm sorry. The other list is also command value. That's okay though. We just erased that previous command and gave it a new one. Where is that? You know, we're probably going to regret doing C for uh, color because it might have been nice to uh, use C for circle, but whatever. Maybe this one doesn't do circles. All right, I'm going to do this a different way. Slightly different. I'm deleting that Simon do list commands thing. And this is going to command, say commands plus equals. You see that plus equals? That adds the second list to the first list. So now our list is twice as long. Oh, it's drawing the square off the edge of the paper. That's all it's doing. So I need to make this F300 much smaller. Make that F30. That was my real problem. It was drawing the square in the middle of the page. Yay, there's our square. All right, besides circle, I can think of about four more commands that we have used in the past that is, are not implemented here. And these are commands that don't take a parameter. Fill. Yeah, begin fill and end fill. And what's the other one? What if we want to leave without, what if we want to travel without leaving a, a path at all? Pin up. Pin up and pin down. So I'm going to list our commands just so that we know what we have supported so far. F equals forward. B is equal to back. This is just a comment, you know. L equals left. R equals right. 
And why am I doing this? Because we're adding on more commands and we can't reuse the same letter. So we have to take some care now that we're adding, you know, like we're going to have like 20 commands by the time we're done. We could make it so that the commands were two characters rather than one, but we're not going to get that complicated. So left and right, H is equal to heading, S is equal to speed, C is equal to color. The other commands I would like to implement, this is our kind of our to-do list. We don't have anything for begin underscore fill. We don't have anything for end underscore fill. We don't have anything for pin up. And we don't have anything for pin down. Now, the way my brain's working, I'm thinking E would be great for end fill, but unfortunately, B is already used for going for begin fill. Here we're kind of running into a problem. Too many letters. We could take, we could change B to mean begin fill, and we just don't go backwards. I'm okay with that. We're going to change B to do begin fill. And then E can be end fill, U can be pin up, and D can be pinned down. Or we could do I for invisible and V for visible, you know. But, okay. So, B is going to be begin fill. B is equal to begin fill. E is going to be end fill. U is going to be for pin up. And D is going to be for pin down. At this point, we've done 11 commands. 10 once we get rid of that one. And you know, we've got, um, you know, 26 letters of the alphabet, so we could start using X and Y and Z, but then it gets kind of stupid. Z means, you know, there's no command that starts with a Z. If we wanted a circle, maybe Z could be circle with a Z, but you know, eh, we'll skip that. Okay, we need to change this command is equal to B, or maybe delete it entirely. I'm gonna comment those lines out because that makes it blatantly obvious what I did. Otherwise, I'd just delete them or change them, you know. But I'm trying to make changes easy for y'all to follow. And speaking of following, this would be an excellent time to check to see how y'all are doing. LF command is equal to B. Go back. No. Begin fill. Simon dot begin underscore fill with no parameters. L if command is equal to E, end our fill. Simon dot end fill. You know, we could do it if we had just a set X and a set Y position that would move it like that. Two letters that meant that. And come to think of it, we don't have an X command and we don't have a Y command. We can, we can implement it. Okay, anyways. L if command is equal to you lift your pen, Simon dot pin up. L lift command is equal to D. Take the pin down, Simon dot pin down. And now we need do new data to test all that stuff. So, let's make a new list of commands. Commands equals, rather than plus equals, if you fixed it the, that way last time, is equal to 
it's a list, so we use the square braces. The first one is just going to be heading, but I want it just to go, I don't know. We haven't done much off in the west. So 0, 90, 180. So our heading is going to be 180. Let's lift our pin. So just up. Let's go forward 200. Let's put our pin down and add six, five or six commands that will draw a triangle. What's the difference between a square and a triangle? A triangle only has three sides, and what are the angles for a triangle? They're not 90. 120. They're 120. So yeah, draw a triangle here by turning either left or right, maybe 120 degrees, you know, and just do that three times. Left, 120, forward, some distance. Gonna make this a small triangle, F50, and then just repeat those two commands three more times, or two more times. Then you better do one more Simon do list underneath all that. Now mine isn't finished because I didn't add all three of the commands for the turtle, or all of the sides. I'm running out of spaces, so I'm going to, for everything visible, so I'm going to delete some of the extra spaces in the beginning. drew my uh, triangle off the screen. So rather than make it go 180, the halfway point between 90 and 180 would be 135. I'm going to make it go back up. So I'm going to change that 180 to a 135 and I'm going to make it go a lot longer than it did. We should have just a reset command that sets it back to zero, zero. So anyways, to get it to where I wanted it to be, I'm going to change that from 180 to 135. I may as well just leave it 200. That will probably put it back around in the center of the screen. Good enough. But it didn't use begin and, and end fill. Where would be a good place to do begin and end fill in this list? Yeah, we could do a begin fill right there or even after we do the down. And then we would do our end fill right here at the end of the list. So after the D, I'm going to do a B to begin the fill. And at the very end of it all, I'm going to do an E to end the fill. That should make a solid. We could do T for thickness. You know, we could, we could max out the alphabet if we wanted to. I think this is about enough. It'd be nice if we hid the turtle itself so that, you know, it didn't leave that little glitch on our triangle. A program is never done. It is just stopped. 
because you can always think of more things to add to it. And when you become a professional programmer, it becomes a challenge because you have to try to, you know, meet your budget, meet your time limits, and you can always come up with more stuff that a program than a program can do. The guys who programmed Doom, one of them, John Romero, split off to make his own company, and he tried to do, you know, a successor to Doom called Dai Katana. But he went so crazy trying to make it better and better and better that he never released it, you know. He finally did a couple of years later, but by then Quake and other games like that had come out, you know. And so he'd spent so long working on it that it, it was kind of behind the times after it came out, even though it had some cool features in it. So Dai Katana was not the big splash that Quake was. I think that's enough of this. So once everybody gets it to draw the filled rect, uh, filled triangle, I think we're done with this. And I don't see that we need to add a homework assignment based on this. Instead, our homework assignment is going to be pretty simple. It's going to be based on the idea of for loops and lists, which we've already done in that, uh, you know, that movie list assignment. But I really want to burn it into your brains. So. Once you got all that, are we all there? Any syntax errors? All right, just a sec. Does PyCharm do line by line debugging where you enter debug mode and it runs one? Okay, we're going to switch to PyCharm real soon. Okay, so. You can click off to the left side on the it set a, a break point. Okay. So this is totally different. We're just going to tack it to the bottom of the Simon program so that we don't have to make a new one. I don't know if that's a great idea. Make a new program. File new. Let's just do a names program. Make a list full of names. L is equal to Bob Sue. Sam, Jill, don't need to go nuts. My name, my date, lists. <laughs> All righty. Let's print this list using both means, both mechanisms. Print using for each and print using for range. Be nice if there were actually two keywords for it, but they're not. The for each. For each, I'm just going to leave the word each off, obviously. S in the list, colon, print out S. When you use for range, you're actually incrementing a counter. My favorite counter is i for index number. So for i in range, excuse me, not for n in range, for i in range, and what's the end of the list that I want to go to? I don't want to just hard code for. So I'm going to do len, the length of the list, colon, print, List item i, so l subscript i, l square braces i. Let's make sure that works. All right, in the past, we've already used the word lists and stuff like that. I'm going to call this one book list. Although it's not books, it was names. That was stupid. Names. <laughs> names list. Yeah, whatever. Okay. That worked for me. 
Hope it works for you. Let me know. Okay, now we're just going to play with the range statements. Here's what I want it to do. Print numbers between 1 and 10. Then I want it to print numbers between 20 and 30. Skipping or by twos, you know? So it'll go 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30. Yeah, even numbers would be a nice way to do it. But that kind of implies that we could do that little check of mod, you know, if mod mm -hmm. two, and I don't want it to do that. So the last one is going to be print numbers between 100 and 90 skipping by negative one. The first one's easy. Since this is a number, I don't, since it's not an index into an array, I don't really want to use I, you could. For X in range, I can't put I can't put zero because I'm not starting at zero, so I can't leave it off. So I have to put one there. I can't put ten because we have to actually make this number one past the end point. Print x. I don't mind reusing the X counter name again. So that's how we count from 1 to 10, right there. The next one is going to be from 20 to 30. So what's my first parameter going to be? Well, if I started at 19, it's actually going to start counting at 19. So we're going to make it 20. And if I put 30, it's going to stop at 29. So 31. Sorry about the weirdness from 20 to 30. Let's test those. Invalid syntax. That's because I didn't actually put the colon in the print statement, excuse me. Make sure you put your colon on that line, but make sure you put the print statement on the line underneath it. All right, that worked. The last one's slightly trickier because we're going negative. Well, that didn't, do, that didn't skip by twos. I made a mistake there. So we can add a third parameter, which tells it how much to skip each time. So our final answer. Is this your final answer? 20, 31, 2. Starts at 20, counts up to but not including 31, skipping two each time. That looks like it works. All right, lastly, for X in range, we want to start at 100, but this time we're counting down, so this number is actually going to be smaller than the other one. If I make it 90, though, it's going to stop at 91. i got to make it 89. And the third parameter is negative 1, so it'll go down by 1 each time. From 100 to 90 by minus 1. I forgot my colon. I forgot my print statement. I get so involved in putting a comment there, I forget to do that stuff. Print x. There we go. 1 to 10, 20 to 30 by 2s, 190 by negative 1s. That's it. So the homework assignment. Use 
four range loops to print. Here's what we want to do. Numbers between 100 and 200. Yeah, that'll be a lot of numbers. Numbers between 200 and 1,000, skipping by 100s. And then numbers between whatever, 10 to 1 by negative 1. Oh, and lastly, make a list of at least six books and print those out using a for each loop and a for range loop. That's it. Good question. I could use a, a multi-line comment. If you remember, a multi-line comment starts with one of those and ends with one of those, and then I wouldn't have to add a hash sign at the beginning of each one of those. Be slightly more efficient. Also makes it a different color, so that's cool. Yeah. said that. <laughs> yeah. All righty. Okay, guys. Let me make a Dropbox for Simon the Turtle. I would recommend that you upload this uh, list program you did right here as well in the same Dropbox so you can reference it. But I'll also put it in the, uh, in the assignment itself. And this one will be due Tuesday night.